Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will learn how to create the unit testing project for the Logic App using the spec flow. In our last demonstration, I have given the walkthrough of the test framework which we are going to use. So if you have any queries with regards to that framework project, what a code it contains, what is the logic it has, so please refer to the last video which I have posted in this particular channel. This video is specifically those who wants to learn how to write the logic app spec flow test right from the beginning, what all permission it needs, how do you create the visual studio solution and all those sort of things. So if you are a beginner on the spec flow and the logic app automation testing, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and welcome to our cloud school. So at the moment, I have a logic app which is of type standard as you can see from here. This logic app has got a workflow which is of the stateful workflow. And in this case, the workflow name I have given is the main, the name of the workflow. The workflow is very, very simple at the moment. It just contains the HTTP trigger. The workflow is very simple. It is of HTTP trigger type when the HTTP request is received. Then it has two different actions such as the initializing the delivery ID as a new GUID. Then we are composing the request body into a response with a success property like this. And then simply we are returning the response back. Nothing, nothing too complicated. In your scenario, we might have a complicated logic app which, which has a complex business logic implemented but here our objective is just to make sure that how do you test this particular logic app nothing to do with the actual logic app implementation right now with that i would switch on to our visual studio project and create a new spec flow project so this is my visual studio solution the solution name is logic app dot test and this has got existing logic app spec flow test which i have demonstrated in my last video but in this case i'm going to create a new spec flow project right from the beginning this is a second project which is a logic app dot test framework this is a framework project which we are going to use uh, for our uh, for our implementation and this project is going to be used as a reference to our spec flow project so let's go ahead and create a spec flow project now to create a project which is of type spec flow, you have to have the extension configured in your Visual Studio. If the spec flow extension is not configured, then first of all, you have to click on the extension, then manage extension. And right from here, and right from here, you can search for spec flow. This is a result for the spec flow for Visual Studio 2022. I have already configured that. But you, if you haven't, then first of all, click here to download or download the VSX file and then you need to install that VSX file on your machine and restart the Visual Studio and you would have the spec flow type of configuration or the project which you can create. Once you have it, right click on a solution, create new project, add new project. Now, at this time, I have to select a project which is of type spec flow. So you need to search for a template which is of type spec flow. Recently, I have already created few projects uh, which is of type spec flow. That's why in the re recent project template, I can see the spec flow project. But in your case, if you are creating for the very first time, then you have to search as an spec flow, which is the type of template which you want to you create which you may want to use, which is a type of template, which you may want to choose to create the project or unit test project. This is the result of uh, spec for project, which is of CSA, Windows, Linux, Mac and test. These are some tags. Click next. I'll give a spec flow project test dot demo. This is just a demo project I'll give. I'll just not change any repository locations. I want to create the project in the same location. Next, it will ask you to choose the specific target frameworks. Currently, 
we are using .NET Framework or .NET Core 6.0 and then next is the test framework which test framework you want to use for example is it NUnit, XUnit or Microsoft Unit test cases so I am going to keep the NUnit as is so it will add the NuGet package as an NUnit and then Fluent Assertion as well as you can see that add Fluent Assertion library so it will add the Fluent Assertion NuGet package as part of this project template I'll say create and that will create a new project the project is created now if I simply expand this project package option so by default along with the project you have got these extensions such as the fluent assertion and unit and unit test adapter and spec flow and unit and live documentation plugin that's it now if you simply click here and build that project just want to see whether there are any issues or not it should not be just but making sure that it has downloaded all the required assemblies packages and all those things so i'm trying to build this project so that these warning icons go away it's restoring the NuGet packages so the compilation is successfully done and if you look at the output file it has spec flow feature file it has generated calculate dot feature and feature so after the compilation or the build run basically it has created a calculator.feature.cs file so now if i expand these folder or try to understand this folder in the spec flow project you have two folders which are having certain number of files so first is this feature folder and inside the feature folder there is a template feature available which is a calculate feature calculator feature actually and then you have got the step definition which is all your features step definition or the implementation of these gherkin features are going to be available inside this step definition class so as soon as i have compiled that it has already created a feature.cs file which is which is an auto generated cs file so if you are familiar with the windows application with net like you add any ui or add a button to your user interface uh, in windows application then it automatically generates the code behind file similarly the feature file as soon as you define the scenarios and compile that it creates the feature file for those scenarios right step definition is the step definition for the different different feature you can have a common step definition for all your feature you can have a shared step definition which contains certain number of steps within for, for your gherkin lines or you could have an independent step definition for different different scenarios and gherkin lines now we are not too worried about this calculate feature because our objective is not to test the calculator functionality we would like to test our logic app so for that reason what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a new feature file to this particular project so i'll right click and add new so from this c sharp item click on the spec flow feature file give it a name to your feature file let's say logic app test that's the feature you can give an appropriate name which defines your logic app so as you can see that as soon as i've added this feature the default spec flow feature is been added here the feature name is the same as the name of my feature file and then there is a default tag is been added and the scenario is decorated with default given when and then which is a gherkin syntax right now as i said at the moment after adding these file i have not compiled the application that's the reason after inside this particular feature file i do not have any code behind file whereas in the calculate file i have a code behind file so if i just compile the application then i should have or the framework will automatically generate the code behind file for all my feature file as you can see that as soon as the compilation is going on it has created a code behind file for this feature right obviously the step definitions are not going to be created automatically because step definitions are dependent upon the scenarios which you write so in this case at the moment our scenario doesn't contain anything specifically so at the moment we do not have anything to create as a definition 
So what I will do is I will simply copy the scenarios of what we had in our previous demonstration. So let me just simply copy this. Now, if you look at these scenario syntax, first of all, I have a background and background defines a given condition which will run before every scenario. So I might have multiple scenario in one feature, which is my test feature is nothing just a test case file. And as we know that within that one single test class, I can have multiple test cases written. Similarly, with this feature file, I could have multiple scenarios written and each scenario is representing a single test case basically. So what this background means that this background information will be invoked before every execution of my scenario. So if I have three scenarios written in this particular feature file, then this background will be executed three times for each of these scenarios, right? So if you have any requirement or the common logic, which you would like to run as a precondition or pre-validation, pre-execution before your test case run, then you can define such condition as in background. All this information I have already demonstrated in my previous video. So if you would like to learn some basics concept of the spec flow, then you can refer to this, uh, refer to my playlist where I have defined the inf or given the information about this spec flow. Now here in the background, I have given the information of my logic app, uh, which is the, what, what is the resource group in which my logic app is there? What is the name of my logic app and what is the name of the workflow? This is the template I have defined. Now it's up to you what template you would like to define. And I may have multiple workflows uh, for my logic app. So that is the reason I have defined these parameters in form of table. So I have not given the variable as in uh, primitive type as in in line to the background context. Now if you look at here, uh, these lines, which are the Gherkin lines are in purple color right now because the step definition for these are not created. Similarly, all the follow up lines in the scenario section is also highlighted with the purple sign or purple color, which means that the step definition for these lines are not defined yet. So just to reiterate my scenario, given I have a request to send to the logic app and the request logic app test manager setup is ready. When I send the message to the logic app, the logic app will start and it will receive the message and it will complete. So this is my simple scenario. Again, it is up to you. How do you want to decorate your Gherkin format? How do you want to set up your scenario? It's up to you. This is the scenario definition I've taken from uh, Mike Stephenson's logic app source code project template. So I'm, I'm using it as is. Okay. Now to define the step definition, you can simply right click on any of these purple line and say define steps. So what it will do, it will define any step for all your purple lines. So you can see that these are the different each line, which is this here given that the logic app is enabled, which is this particular line, uh, give, given I have a request to send to the logic app, given the logic app test manager is set up and when, so this is given, that's why it is decorated with given. Again, this is given, this is decorated given. After given, I have end, which is, which means that this next line, which is starting with end is also part of given only. That's why the third method is also decorated with given. The next line we have when starting with when, which is not part of given. That's why the next method is decorated with when keyword. Similarly, the next method is decorated with then keyword, which is not part of either given or when. But after that, after these subsequent three lines, which is starting with end are part of then condition only. That's why we have these many then operators. Lastly, we have the class name. We, you can define the class name as you would like to. Let's say I may want to say shared step definition. 
I could give any name uh, or I can simply copy the, to the clipboard so it will copy all these five it will not create any class name or as we are creating for the very first time then I simply create that so it, all my step definition will be created inside the shared step definition now the shared step definition class has been generated under the step definitions folder as I mentioned and all of our code which we were able to see inside that clipboard window that is being available here now each of these method at the moment do not have any implementation that, that's the reason it is throwing a new exception which is of type pending step definition step exception which means that the step definition is not written on any of these methods so simply if i run this it will fail so to run it without making any changes as of now what i'll do is i'll go to the text explorer i'll compile the application text explorer and now if you look at the text explorer right now for this project which is the one which we have created just now demo project inside the demo project we have a demo feature we have calculate feature and then we have a logic app test feature and this is the scenario name which is not we have changed you can change the scenario name if you will change the scenario name then it will basically update the information here so let me just compile it this is the run http trigger logic app which is the name of this scenario so it is the test case is created with this name now if i simply run it it will possibly skip the test cases because all our step definitions are having no implementation it's it's going to throw an exception which means the test case will be uh, failed or skipped basically so it says that one or more step definition is not yet implemented that's the reason it all of these are uh, skipped uh, because there is no implementation on those steps which is fair because we have not added any of these implementation so now what's next we are going to do we need to add a reference to this test project okay so i'll add a reference to this test project right now dependencies add project reference and we will add the project reference to this test framework project the source code for this test framework will be available to you on our github repository if, in case if you would like to refer you can refer it right from there now next thing I need is the source code or I need to define the steps. So what I'm going to do is I need to, defi to define the step. I'll go to my step right now. Here's this one. I simply first of all create a constructor. I'll create a private property uh, which is of common context class like this. And then this common context class I will initialize as a dependence injection from the constructor which I have just now decorated. Next we will define our logic app step which is this that the logic app is enabled. So what it's trying to do right now is trying to get a table type of variable because all those variables are we have defined as a table variable. So it's going to get a table type which is of type workflow so workflow is a class which we have defined in our framework and then from this common context we are setting up these three variables and then uh, we have a logic app test manager so we are calling a build method by passing these parameters such as the workflow name logic app name and resource group name so that it set up those contexts or the variables right now to define the next step which is i have a request to send to the logic app which means that we need to prepare a sample request which we can send it to logic app this could be anything uh, or any json request which you may want to pass so that is the reason we are passing or preparing the re request like this next step is uh, to make sure that the logic app test manager is ready by the framework so we are just trying to build uh, the context so basically we don't need this here because we are building up this setup right from here next condition is the when condition when i send the logic uh, the data to the logic app which means that we need to trigger the logic app so we are again using the common context logic app test manager and the trigger method which will trigger the logic app with this content option 
as soon as this will complete the common context will have the response of object uh, built so in the next step what we want to do is we would like to make sure that we have got a proper response and for that reason we are using the common context dot workflow id and then uh, we are using a fluent assertion to check whether the workflow id is should not be null and then uh, we are checking the workflow load history which means that as we have already triggered the workflow so which means that the workflow should have the history if it is already completed so we are loading that history into this test manager object and then once it is loaded we are checking the trigger status the trigger should be completed successfully and that is what we are validating it now the next two action item or two three action items are basically to validate the result of the individual actions within the workflow uh, which is this the logic app will receive the message to validate or to receive the message from the specific action this is what you can do which is logic app test manager get action method provide the name of the action and the name of the workflow similarly i would like to have the overall response overall action status for my response action so which i am checking it here like i mentioned previously as well it is up to you how do you define your scenario based on that basically you can simply uh, you know write the logic at last i am just checking all my logic app is run successfully and i got the response as i am expecting it right now with that all my implementation is done uh, for this particular step definition and if i compile that it should not have any error as such because i've already added a reference to that project now the compilation is successful successfully completed i will try and execute my test cases let's see if it runs successful at this time we should not have any skipped st uh, steps because all our step definitions are there we have defined the step logic in each and every method okay so we have got an error it says that logic app framework app builder is failing to read the configuration from the app settings.json which is fair enough because we do not have any app settings.json file created so what i'll do is i'll copy the app settings.json file from my previous project to this particular project i simply paste it here now if you look at the details of this app settings project it has got four different attributes one is client id client secret tenant and azure subscription id now this detail is required to create a bearer token from the code and that bearer token will be used to make an api calls to your logic app which is logic app api call now while you add these app settings.json you need to make sure that your build action is set to content and your copy to output directory is also set to copy always by that what will happen whenever you compile this application it this particular app settings.json file will be available in your bin directory and it will be added now the question is how do you create the spn or service principle to get all these details for day for to create the spn we'll go to the azure portal and create it right from there now for that i have to go to azure active directory so this is my active directory for my azure subscription and if i go to the app registration this is where i can create the new service principle or the app registration to invoke my logic app test cases now now click on view all applications in the directory at the moment i have two application service principle created i can use existing one or i can create new to create new you simply give the demo spn any name you would like to give i'll keep the account in this organization as a single tenant to this particular active directory only i click here and the register so that will create a new service principle or the app registration now with that i have got the client id which i'll copy that and i'll use this client id in my app setting reference so this is the client id which we have just now created 
Now next we need to use the service principle secret or the client secret. For that I will click on the client and the secret option. I'll say create new secret because I am the administrator to this particular subscription. So I have full permission to perform these actions in my in your case you might not have the uh, you might not have access to create the secrets or create the app registrations you may need to contact to your administrator or the user who has the permission to perform the action so let's say create secret that will be available for 60 days make sure you copy that particular secret because once you navigate or switch over from this screen you will not be able to see this value which is a secret value so i'll use this secret value next you need to have a tenant value so i'm going to copy this this is my tenant id for the active directory and lastly i would need my sales principal detail or, or lastly i need the subscription id for that reason i'll click on the any of the Azure resources created in that particular subscription such as the resource group that is where I can find my subscription ID which I can use. Now simply the settings are there now we are ready to run our test case rerun our test cases this time also it will fail I'll tell you the reason once we have the exception I'm trying to go step by step so that I do not skip any of this step and may not make your life difficult so trying to go step by step and getting an error so that by having an error you know that how do you fix those errors in case if you have such scenarios so as i mentioned that the test cases will fail at the moment we are getting 403 response with 403 exception which means that there is some network issue while trying to invoke the rest api call to the logic app now it happens because we have created the service principles but we have not assigned the permission to this service principle to our logic app resource and that is a key thing we are missing so to do that what i'll do is you can assign the permission to the logic app or you can assign the permission to subscription which is a parent group or the resource group level which is again a parent of the logic app so what i'll do is i'll create a permission or assign a permission to the resource group in which I have my logic app. So I'll go to access control management, identity and access management section of my resource group and I'll try and add the permission. I'll say add new permission. Again, to perform this role, you need to have the higher level of permissions like administrator or user administrator level of permission to assign permission to any of the resources in Azure. So it might possible again, you do not have the same level of access. So you have a job role function, job function roles, which you may want to use. So there are hundreds of roles provided by Microsoft Azure, which you may want to use. But in our case, we need a privilege administrator role for this service principle, which is of type contributor. So I'll select a contributor, click on the next option. And then from here, we'll select user group and principal option. So here in the case of principal, we'll select the service principal name which we have created. I'll say demo, which is a demo SPN. We have selected, select next. So this is what it is, review and assign the permission. And that will add the permission to the resource group. And now our logic app would have inherited permission from resource group to logic app, which is the same permission as in contributor permission. Now, if I run again now, we have the service principle, we have a proper permission, we have the test framework step definitions defined properly. It, this time our test courses are expected to run successfully. I'm going to run it now and meanwhile I'll just open the logic app as well. So this is the workflow. So we'll go to the workflow section. We'll have our main workflow and our trigger is successfully invoked just now. I can simply see that our test case is successfully completed in just 16 seconds 17 seconds with the request which we are sending it and if we just open the request i should see my details my name which i have provided as in request meanwhile it is opening i'll try and rerun again so i should have one more run 
after the specified time. So this was the run. We should have a composed detail input and output. Now if you go back to the main again, we should have another run like right now we have we had a run on 12.56. Let's refresh that if I have next run which we have triggered just now. This is run on 12.58. So this is the way you can run your logic app workflows. You can configure your logic app workflow. Of course, you can debug the individual workflow by putting a breakpoint here on the step definition or you can put a breakpoint here at the feature steps as well. I hope you have found this useful and you would be able to create your own logic app spec flow workflows to test your logic app which are deployed into Azure. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.